All right, looks like we're live. It's 512 on Friday, September 11th. Um, and today I'm going to be taking a quick look, a first time look, a look starting at zero um, at 11T. It's a simpler static site generator. Um, I've My blog runs on Jekyll. I've looked a little bit at Gatsby, um, which was a bit complex. Uh, so I've heard good things about 11D, starting at zero, just gonna mess around, work through the guides and uh, see what I can get going. So with that, these are the docs. We have a nice flying um, opossum there. And uh, all right, we're not gonna do the quick start here. We're gonna dive into, here we have the documentation. Giant button, love it. Um, and let's see here. All right, getting started. 11T's on NPM, requires version eight of Node. Okay, so let's run through our, let's run through our getting started here. Hop over to iTerm, make a new directory. Um, open this up in code. All right, get our terminal going down here at the bottom. And let's see what we got here. NPM init. Start a project. Am I in the right directory here? Yes. Yes? No, I am not. <laughs> All right, rough start. I had, uh, I already had code open so let's let's kill let's kill this one and let's hop into that actual sample project we'll open that up in code hop back into the terminal npm init the project and now we're up and running all right so we can install 11D, save it in the package.json. So it's a dev dependency. We don't want a global install. So we're gonna install it as a dev dependency here. Let that go. And we're gonna run it. Okay, so we can use MPX to run the project. So we'll just run MPX. All right, hop back in. No, stuff's still going. Cool. Ah, not what I meant to do. <laughs> Running through the whole install again. Let's look at our steps. So we're going to confirm that it's running, and then we're going to create some templates. So I don't even know off the bat um, what the general philosophy or structure of an 11T project is. My understanding and what I kind of like is that uh, it's pretty flexible, um, but I guess we'll see where we end up. All right, so version 11, what did this say? 11, yes. So we're gonna create template files, it's fun. Just to make some basic stuff here. So we're making an index. Um, let's just open up that index to see what we did. Uh, format that a little bit better so we can see it. Hopefully that doesn't break anything. So we got a page title and a body. Um, and then we're going to make a readme that has a page header in it. So we'll hop back there, make the readme, we'll open that up, and that is all good as well. Okay, we now created an HTML template and a markdown template. Is this, I also don't know if I'm zoomed in enough if you can see these docs that I'm reading. Give you a little closer. Um, so, okay, so now we're gonna run that 11D command again, which I'm absolutely gonna need to uh, create an alias for because that's a bit much. Um, let's run that NPX 11D command. All right, so writing to underscore site, and it creates an uh, index.html file and then a readme directory after the readme file with an index.html. 
So I guess this is where we're building to by default. And readme is a folder with an index that where that markdown got processed. Okay. Um, well, and that's exactly what that did. <laughs> Gaze upon your templates. So use dash dash serve to start up a hot reloading local web server. Um, so npx, let's try typing that out. Uh, T NP, NPX at well, 11D dash dash serve. Oh, you know, that's going to spin that up. Well, it's probably going to spin it up in Safari instead of, uh, instead of Chrome where I want it. So let's just, okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll move it over after we have it up and running. Or not. Oh, nice. It doesn't open it, just provides that to me. So that run it, access URLs, local, external, UI, UI external. So let's grab local first, and we'll grab that in Chrome. New tab. We got our high, and if we go up there and go to read me i'm assuming we'll have the page header very cool all right so going to that yes 11 is live if we make a change 11 d using browser sync will refresh the browser with your new changes automatically so let's slide this over actually i like having that full so i can see the docs better but we'll just confirm this by hopping in here uh, we'll go back to the README, and we'll say page header, uh, time also important. And then this is a, a thing and another thing, conclusion, spelled correctly. All right, so live reload, reloading browsers, we'll hop back over there to the README. And we'll see if it actually reloaded. I don't think it did. Why not? Huh. Interesting. I wonder if this is because Chrome isn't my default browser, because obviously um, that did not reload that page. I'm sure, if I refresh it, it'll be fine. Yes, but it did not hot reload. Um, I'm not going to try to debug that right now. I'm just going to assume um, that that's an issue because Chrome isn't my default browser, though I'm not entirely sure. Um, all right, so we'll hop back to the docs if my computer speeds up a little. Um, so we're gazing on our templates. It's serving them. Oh, <laughs> this is a fairly common where I, I, I assume something and then I read the docs a little further and actually get an answer. Uh, editing readme won't refresh your browser automatically because browser sync requires a body tag for live reload. Use layouts to add a body tag around your markdown content. So I'm assuming layouts are how we can structure content, uh, you know, kind of uh, provide layouts. Um, so we'll take a look at those soon, but we're going to hop into uh, the command line usage a little further here. Um, okay, these examples assume local project installation instead of global, which is what we did. NPX uh, runs through the current directory and outputs the site, which is what we saw in the examples. Um, we are not using a global installation. Um, NPX 11D input output. Yes, okay, so this is the command that effectively you're running. Um, so we can read up the, on the docs for input and output if we want to. That's fine. A hypothetical template in the current directory will be rendered as site template. That makes sense. I wanna work through here and then look at some of the, um, all right, so, okay, find the most up-to-date list of commands. We'll take a quick look at those, uh, though we probably won't, um, well, I don't need them in there. I can run it in 
code. Um, I'll make a new tab down here. It's not up there. Uh, let's go. Get rid of that. Go back there. Make two. And now we'll run the help command to see what else we have. All right. So in terms of help, um, versions where the input files are, which defaults to the current directory, output to site, helpful, logical, and then serve runs the file. Um, watch watches them and automatically rewrites without running the server formats specific template types quiet don't print them all right config file name.js override the 11 e config file path which defaults to dot 11 e.js so we'll need to look a little bit more into that config file and then try run okay so helpful basic straightforward list of commands nothing too complicated but Honestly, I mean, I like it. Um, you know, let's, before we before we leave this, let's hop back up to, because we are still watching this, we're gonna hop back up to index and we'll actually confirm that we get, oh, let's go, let's go to index and confirm that we're getting live reloading here, just instead of taking, instead of taking the docs at their word, we'll say, hi there, hi there, friend. Browser syncs are reloading, and we have hi there, friend. So yes, it does in fact uh, hot reload that. Um, so these are all good. Browser sync requires a body tag. We can watch. Okay, so these are that help doc that we saw has all this stuff. Examples. You can input an output to the same directory. Cool. All right, so we might have to. We're gonna have to start our projects next. We are. And there is a long list. Um, so 11 base blog, I mean, it's official, so that might be the best place to start here. Um, all right, let's see. Okay. I don't know if I, so what it looks like here is that there's a lot of options we zoom in even farther. All right, this is too close for me, but so that you can see. Um, there's a lot of options here, and they don't look like they are all blogs, which um, which I like. I like the idea of being able to use this uh, for other things. Um, all right. I'm going to start with the official ones, and then I'll work my way. I'll see if I can check out some of the uh, some of the other options in there. So. 11D base blog. Zoom in a little bit here. Deploy this to your own site. Deploy with Netlify. Clone this repo and navigate. NPM install. All right, so you know what? The base blog here would be interesting to just look at the structure um, of working with 11D. So we'll give that a spin. I'll turn. Here, git clone, we will call it demo blog, cd demo blog. I'm going to close the, oh, you know, what will happen to here. Kill that. We're going to close this getting started project. Um, and we will open this one up. We are in demo blog. Cool. All right. So obviously, <laughs> looking at the file list there, uh, we've got a lot going on there, um, and I'm getting a warning that my uh, my stream is running a little slow. Um, so I'm sorry if there's uh, issues with that. I'll keep an eye on that, and if it gets too uh, too inconsistent, I'll just have to shut it down, unfortunately. Um, let me just take a closer look at that for a sec. All right. Okay, so it's, run yeah, how is it? It's wacky that it's running a little slow. All right, so I think we're back up. Um, stream settings is helpful though. Okay, back to the project here, back to the starter blog. All right, so yeah, we're gonna run 
can we just well i don't have it global can i just oh i have to run an npm install i always forget that and then specifically look at the 110.js file all right good instructions so we're in here npm install and while that's running we will look at the dot 110.js file and get a feel for it um so that's providing let's close that side for now um what do we have going on here we have a number of modules that are required um, and then we have this config in which we are adding specific plugins. So it's interesting, obviously, what type of plugins exist for Eleventy. Um, I guess this is using Nunjux, which I am entirely unfamiliar with. Um, we've got a readable date, which I guess takes the date and makes it readable. Nice enough. Um, oh, that's nice to have those like that HTML date string. Tag list. It's a fairly long file here, so there's a lot configured. Um, so I guess this is our config for the markdown analyzer that's being used in this blog. Settings for browser sync. Um, I don't care if it's a markdown template engine is liquid. Nunjux is doing the other stuff. And these are all optionals with the default. OK, I like, uh, Jekyll has a data directory structure. Includes, it's just helpful to know what the defaults are for the project. So everything is installed. Um, so I don't think I can just run 11 here. Yeah, I can't. I have to do, because, because it's in the project, npx. 11D, and we'll just serve it. And we will hop back to Chrome, tab two, give that a refresh. All right. So your blog name home, edit the data metadata.json file with your blog's information. Okay, optional, edit the 11D.js with config preferences. Delete this message from the includes folder. This is an 11 project created from the base repo. This is true. All right, in here, close that. We're gonna hop into the underscore data. And in data, we just have a metadata.json file. Um, now, I wonder if this is the default or if this is just um, what's being used by this particular blog config. Demo blog, URL, doesn't matter. <laughs> OK, a navel, <laughs> navel gazer. <laughs> um, so feed settings. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look in the docs and see if this is, um, if this setup is a, uh, if the metadata.json is, is an established convention within 11D or just for this particular project. Um, and then we can hop into, let's hop over here, and we can go down to, that's data, and close that. Includes layouts and base. Um, let's see if I can open that up. There we go. Uh, should we do this? Probably. Nunjux, 85,000, everything based on how many people are using it. All right, sure. Let's see if that's helpful at all with syntax highlighting. It is. Um, so here's our base layout. Um, and here I'm seeing a title or metadata dot title. Let's see where this come comes from. 
Um, interesting. I guess I, I'm going to need to take a look at Nunjux um, to get more familiar with it. Um, also seeing again that my stream health is a little not great, so I'm sorry about that. Um, I'm going to hop down here. Okay, we have this div class warning, which explains this stuff. And then I can delete this message. So I think I will. <laughs> I have to say, I really do appreciate the sense of humor that the creators of this project have. It's pretty spectacular. Um, all right, cool. Archive, all posts. First post uh, doesn't look great on the screen size this large, but okay. About me, home. So let's let's just pull in and let's just look through how this is structured again. Um, layouts are here. We'll have to look into layouts and and the different options that you have. Base, does base use post list? No. Well, I will have to read about navigation. I mean, the one thing that's nice with a lot of these uh, static site generators is you can use them without understanding them entirely thoroughly. Um, wondering. Okay. Posts is everything. Posts.json. Right. First post. So all the blog posts live in here. That's fairly similar to uh, to Jekyll. Um, and the you know the basic structure of these is uh, follows the Jekyll convention, which is good because I'm familiar with that. Um, now I was wondering how that, so what are we linking to for archive base? Lists the posts. For entry and collections dot all template class content save footer. Oh, so then we have home. What is this getting the home? About CSS feed image node posts in here. Oh, okay. We have the index index file in the root, um, which is using the post list from up here. I'm assuming. Um, oh, there it is. Um, and then it links to the archive. And that's interesting though, because it's linking to slash posts, which is where these are. But we also have an archive file here. Oh, interesting. All right, so I'm gonna have to read a little bit more about how these are structured. I mean, slash posts, I would assume would take me there. Um, so I'm not sure the order in which 11D parses this stuff. All right, so that's the starter blog. Oh, edit. Reading the docs late. Oh, here we go. Okay, so let's let's learn here. Let's do a little reading. Um, about slash index shows how to add a content page. <laughs> Didn't realize that. Um, that is not the case for that one unless it does unless they're saying just in general in general you add content pages um by adding a folder okay so adding a folder with an index file is how you add in this thing uh content pages um template class makes sense Posts has the blog posts, but can they can really live in any directory. They only need the post tag to be added to this collection. All right, so I mean, obviously organization is better 
these could live anywhere, but they're all given, they're given a post. And it doesn't have, unless, okay, so maybe posts in here is tagging everything in the directory with posts. I'm guessing that's what's happening there. Um, add the nav tag to add a template to the top level site navigation. For example, this is used on index and about. So add the nav tag. This is done on index. Where's the nav tag? I'm going to see 11 in navigation. Add the nav tag to add a template to the top level site navigation. So does this one have? I mean, I see the 11 navigation tag here. And this, maybe this is what they mean, because uh, that is also on index. That's number one on the nav, and that's number two on the nav, and the other one was number three. Um, content can be any template format. Blog posts don't need to be marked down. Configure your supported templates in 11.js template formats. Um, okay. Blog post feed template is feed. This is also a good example of using a global data file that uses data metadata.json. So let's just take a look at feed, get an idea of how that works. All right. Feed. Metadata comes from data the metadata file there. Um, so I'm going to have to figure out how these permalinks work. Um, oh, all the, so and all the metadata from metadata.json is then being used uh, here throughout this template. Um, very cool. And this example uses three layouts, base, home, and post. Base is the top level HTML structure. Home is the home page template, which is wrapped into base. And then post is the blog post template wrapped into base. So let's look at home and post layouts, base, home. So home uses base, post uses base. Um, base uses nothing, um, and that looks like a. Oh, it's just an include, not a, uh, not a layout. Are layouts in includes in this case? They are. Okay. Um, and then each of these pages specifies the layout that it uses. Now within posts, is that done as well? Yeah. That's the layout that we're using. Okay. All makes sense. And then includes post list is a nunjux include that is a reusable component to display a list of all the posts. Very cool. Okay, so I'm definitely at a little bit of a disadvantage in that I am not entirely familiar with nunjux. But the general structure of this makes sense to me. And I mean, that basic blog is up and running there. Um, so I'm going to take a look at some of the other starter projects. Well, let's go tutorials and quick tips to making content with data. Turn check all up to 11 t This is actually, if I decide to, to convert my blog, um, this could be helpful. Um, okay. I'm going to read this separately because I think this would be the helpful walkthrough for well, converting my, my current site over and, and how everything works. Um, 
And now I can throw this on Netlify using third party data. Okay, very cool. But I'm just gonna mess around with actual projects here. Okay, working with templates, layouts. Let's just look at the docs on layouts here. Um, 11 layouts are special templates that can be used to wrap other content. To note that a piece of content should be wrapped, use the layout front matter. That was pretty straightforward. Um, obviously, Nunjux is used fairly widely here, um, which is just another thing to learn. Um, you can use any template language for your layout. Um, Okay. Yeah, where where are the layout folders? I guess they could be. I guess by default, layouts are looked for in the in, in the includes folder. It seems like that's the convention. Um, you can have a separate folder of eleven layouts if you prefer that to having them live in the includes folder. Okay, so that's where layouts exist. You, they wrap whatever you put in there. Um, and then how do you output? Let's, let's hop back to those layouts just to see how the content is output. So layouts, base, lots of stuff. Where's the, okay, so content or safe is what gets output there. I'll have to see what that convention means. Home, same thing. So that's how you output the content that is going to be wrapped by this particular templates. And this one is the post one. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, now that the layout template will populate the content data with the child's template. Also note that we don't want to double escape output. So we're using the provided Nunjux. Okay, so that's a Nunjux convention. Um, cool front matter. I'm going to have to walk through because it seems like they're pretty flexible with how you can pass data down to your templates so that uh, I'll have to look at that. Um, so that was layouts by chain collections. Okay, you know what, I'm just going to mess around with projects first. Um, because you watching me read the docs is not I'm sure particularly interesting. Um, 11D on glitch, 11D garden. Um, you know, I saw one down here. Okay, 11D one. Let's just see what this scaffold project is. Netlify failed. <laughs> Skeleton site. Okay. Maybe not that one. And that's the only one there. At least this is 11 million post CSS. I mean, we can take a look at that one. Um, Lots of stuff with Tailwind here. Simple Journal 11. Um, they they certainly have a lot to get started with. Oh, 11 Classic Blog Starter. So I'm using Hide with Jekyll right now. Um, let's just see if I can. When was this last updated? Two months ago. Let's. Uh, Let's give it a shot here. Uh, I just want to see what this looks like when we spin it up. All right. I mean, not that I necessarily, if I update my blog, want it to look exactly the way that it does right now. Um, but it's also, you know, looks good enough. I probably would end up updating the look, but let's just see here. Once this installs, blah, 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 blah. 
All right, while that's installing, we're going to look at some other stuff. See if I can get in a couple more static site. So I'm also interested in Tailwind CSS, though I know like nothing about it. Um, and a bunch of these seem to use uh, Tailwind. So, you know, we're going to grab the first one that does. Ah, it's that one. Jamstack Web Starter. Okay, so let's hop back in and see if this installs. It did. We'll open this up in code. Um, hop down to the terminal. You know, we should probably turn the other one off. We'll end that project for now. And then here, not npm, npx. We'll see if we can get that up and running, and we'll see what happens. So this, so that's localhost 8080. Oof. <laughs> we'll probably have to do something else <laughs> in order to get this running. <laughs> um, let's just take a quick look at the docs for one before we move along, if there are any docs for it. Um, all right. Classic blog website using 11D, tools, 11D gulp highlight. Themes, nunjack port from hide, problems, dates, creation dates, post default, SEO and automatic links, responsive, nunjacks. Um, just wondering if we have to do more with like a build there or something in order to get that up and running. Um, did it generate any like, CSS or anything? It says it did. It's just. Hmm. Strange. Oops, not what I meant to do. Oh, I could do that. Um, yeah. So something got messed up with the generation of the CSS. All right, you know what? I'm just going to move along, let that one be, um, and we'll try another one. Hopping back to this, kill that. And what we were looking at, this one, Jamstack Web Starter. We'll give it a shot. We're using 11D and Nunjax. Okay, let's just let's just take a quick look here. All right. For more support for the template engine, here it is. Extends various block header. All right. Maybe I'll look at this uh, next week. Maybe. All right, so. Git clone. We're going through. That's there. All right. Let's see what's that one called? Jamstack Web Starter. Open that up. Hop into the terminal. NPM install. And while that runs, we'll see what else is going on in the docs here. All right. NPM start starts watch tasks to compile when changes are detected. Creating a production build is NPM run build. I mean, that seems pretty straightforward. So let's let's do an npm start once this is installed. It is npm start. And actually, let's look at the package JSON here. Let's 
start one dash two mint. There's a bunch going on here that I don't really know what's going on. Two, seven, eight. Let's hop back in here. I'm assuming it's being served from the same place. Yeah, localhost 8080. All right. Minimal boilerplate. Get started. It takes me to that post. I mean, this is cute looking. Let's just take a little bit of a look around the project itself. Um, so in here, we've got our, okay, let's look at our 11D config. Um, add pass through copy source static. So static data that we have in here just gets passed through. Very cool. Um, object keys filters for each filter name, alert and config add filter. So these are filters that we're getting from the utils directory. What are these? Um, okay, so this seems like it's similar to uh, in that uh, starter blog from 11D, um, you can add data filters. So they're just defined here in utils and then uh, applied. So it gives us a, an organized place to do that. So I'm guessing that's what happens with transforms and collections. They're both, they're all in the utils here. Um, and we just have them organized there and can apply them as needed. Um, Although this is obviously a bit more uh, complex than that example. So those are those, 11 config, set, use, get, ignore. Um, return, so our input is from source. Our input's from source. Our output's the dist, includes, that's probably the regular convention. And then we have a, a high, a top level layout convention. So one of the things I'm noticing with 11D is um, it does seem that you have a good deal. I mean, there's probably basic conventions, but you have uh, some ability to uh, do it however you want. Um, template formats, HTML markdown, and Nunjux. And we're using Nunjux. Cool. That's our 11D config. Um, now, are there any pages on this site? We have a base, our base document, which has, so it's including head. I mean, it seems pretty well organized here. Nice. HTML head dot dev. Very cool. Uh, you know, we have to take a look at that. Obviously we have to take a look at that. Not for too long, but just to see what it is. A free guide to the HTML5 head elements. Recommended minimum. Car set, name, title. And then everything else you can put in there. Oh, what a helpful resource. Very neat. Um, let's hop back in there. So we've got a bunch of stuff here and an explanation of what they do. It's really it's a really thorough uh, head tag. Um, so the base is using that. Um, Site.env. So the one thing, and I don't think I'm going to figure it out today, is where um, this data is put together. Well, as I say data, I go to data, and there's a site in there which exports um, this stuff. Let's take a quick look over at the 11D docs uh, just to see if we can get an idea of how that works. Um, data cascade is I'm assuming where that would be. In 11D data is merged from multiple different sources before a template is rendered. The data is merged in what 11D calls the data cascade. 
sources of data. When the data is merged from the other data case, the order provides blah, 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 blah. Computed data. Computed data. Uh, at the end of the data cascade, you may want to inject data properties into your data object that are based on other, so that, okay, let's jump, jump back here. When the data is merged in the 11D data cascade, the order of priority for sources of data is from highest priority to lowest. Okay, so computed data can overwrite anything on this list above it. So the first thing I imagine that gets checked, that gets checked are the global data files. Um, so you can have a directory, um, which is the dir.data option, um, and everything in it will be added into the global data object available in all templates. So very cool. I like that convention. That makes sense. Super handy. If a data file is in a folder, the folder name will inform your global data object structure. For examples, for example, consider our user list.json. If it was moved into a user's folder, our data would now be available. So the folders uh, provide basically nested namespaces. Uh, and those are our global data files, directory data files. Um, some data may be available locally only in one specific template. All right, for that use, we also search for JSON and JavaScript data files in specific places in your directory structure. Um, important exception, template and directory specific data are not pre-processed through a template manager in global data files. Are. Uh, for example, consider a template located in posts, subject, my first blog post. 11 will look for data in the following places. So, I mean, I really, I'm finding this uh, approach laid out in a very understandable way. Um, and it makes sense. The docs uh, really do seem solid and, and helpful, not necessarily flashy, but, you know, straightforward and usable. And that's the most important thing. Um, so we're looking at the content template front matter. If we were in posts sub during my first blog post, um, it would look for that file name with, uh, an 11 e data.js, um, 11 e ty, I wonder what that is. Uh, or just the file name.json. Okay, and that would be specific data only available to that blog post. Um, and then we've got, it would look within the directory for things applicable to everything within that directory and then it would check in the parent directory. Okay, change in the 11 data file suffix. Use the configuration API to change the file suffix. Cool. By default layout to multiple templates. Uh, so this is what we saw in the example um, where you can put a JSON file uh, in a directory and have it apply data to everything within that directory, which is very cool. Um, all right, I'm not going to read all of the docs here. Um, honestly, I, I really like um, I really like what I see. I have to get a better handle on Nunjux, but it looks like a pretty straightforward templating engine. It's just not one I'm terribly comfortable with. Um, but as a static site generator, I'm finding it much more accessible than I found Gatsby. Um, nothing against Gatsby, but just it seems. Uh, you know, if I want to get up and running um, quickly, uh, I, I like it for that. Um, I'm going to be doing a little bit more exploring, but I think if I were to choose right now where to move my blog from, I would probably move it from Jekyll to 11D instead of Gatsby. That's just my gut right now. Um, 
but thanks for hanging around while I explored this. Uh, maybe I'll dive in next week to, to look a little bit closer, but uh, have a great weekend and uh, maybe I'll see you all next week. Goodbye.